In this lecture, you're going to learn about the onChange modifier in SwiftUI. The onChange modifier is going to get fired whenever a particular state changes. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let's say that we have a toggle view. So we will create a toggle view. And in the title of the toggle view, we can actually pass in anything you want. We're just going to go ahead and say light. The bindable property, we're going to make sure that we create a state. So let's go ahead and create a state property. Var is light on, which is the Boolean property set to false. We can pass this to our toggle view. This means that any time the toggle view is going to change the value from true to false or false to true, the is light on property is going to change. So the state of the toggle view will be, whether it's true or false, will be stored in the is light on property. We can also go ahead and say that this particular toggle view is fixed size. So it only spans or uses a space that is required. Now, if we want to handle the change part of the is light on, meaning whenever the is light on property is changed, whenever the state changes, we can go ahead and use the on change modifier on the toggle view itself. The on change modifier can be attached to a particular view. So this means that on change of is light on, we can perform whatever operation we want to perform. We're going to get the value. And now if the value is actually true, then go ahead and print out light is on. Else, if it's false, then we can print out light is off. We can go ahead and run the application. And you will see that any time we toggle the switch from true to false, we get light on being printed. And any time it is off, the light off is getting printed. So on chain modifier is actually great if you want to always be looking for the changes that are happening in your state and you want to take a particular action based on the state changes. So this is the on change modifier in SwiftUI. In this lecture, you're going to learn that how you can use the new on receive modifier in SwiftUI to subscribe to the changes that the publisher publishes. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's say that we have some sort of a button which can create a notification. And we can throw our custom notification using the notification center. So let's go ahead and create a button. And this button will simply say, post a notification. Now, what notifications do we want to post? For this, I'm going to go ahead and create our own custom notification. I'm going to create the notification name by extending notification.name property and then our notification.name, which you can actually see over here, is a struct. So we're extending the struct. And we will go ahead and say that this is the task added notification. We are going to construct this using the name. And you can provide any name that you want. I'm just going to go ahead and say task added notification. Perfect. So now we have the notification. We can go ahead and post this notification using the notification center. So notification center dot default dot post the notification, which in this case will be notification dot name dot task added notification. And we can also send some sort of an object with the notification. Let's say wash the car. Now there are a couple of different things that are going on over here. We do need to provide the label, the actual label, which is name. And let's go ahead and build it. Looks like everything is building up correctly. Perfect. But now the question is, well, how do we receive the notification? So for that, I'm going to go ahead and fire or create a text 
view. In the text view, we can go ahead and perform on receive modifier, which can hook up to a particular publisher. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say notification center dot default dot publisher and a particular publisher that we are looking for, which in this case is the task added notification. Whenever we get the notification, we fire the perform closure. And inside the perform closure, we can get the actual value. The value can be extracted because it is already passed. We can use dollar sign zero to refer to the object, the argument passed to the closure, and we can simply get the actual object. We can cast it to a string and assign it to some other variable. The new task doesn't really exist, but don't worry, we can go ahead and create a new task as a state variable. So I can go ahead and create a state variable, assign the new task, whatever is in the object, which we know that we are passing it, wash the car, since it is indicated right here. Once we pass this, the next and the final step is to simply display that. So we can go ahead and unwrap it, and if it is unwrapped correctly, then we can simply display the value of the new task or else we will display an empty string. And that's it. Let's go ahead and run the application. And you will see that when you run the application, it's going to display you the push or the post notification. When we perform post notification, it posts our custom notification. And then finally, it gets received in a text view. So this receive gets fired because we are listening for a special type of notification, which is a task added notification. We get the value of the task, we assign it to the state. Whenever we assign it to the state, the view re-renders and this allows us to push the notification on the screen in a text view. So this is another way of getting some changes into your Swift UI. Now, in this case, I'm using my own notification, but all the different notifications that are available in your iOS framework, whether they are coming to the foreground notification, going in the background notification, cloud kit, adding something notification, any kind of a notification you can subscribe to using the on receive modifier and that is going to fire whenever it sees that that particular notification got fired. So this is another way of kind of handling the events that are generated from somewhere else or subscribing to those events in SwiftUI.